This is episode 62 of the Strength Running Podcast, and today I'm going to help you get closer to a new personal best in the 5,000 meters. Hello, everyone. This is Jason Fitzgerald, and I'm excited to share a solo episode with you today about the 5K. The 5,000 is one of the shortest distance events in track and field and one of my favorite events. It blends a great combination of endurance and speed into one race, meaning to get good at it, you have to have both endurance and speed. And even though I love the 5K, it's one of my favorite events, I don't think I'm very good at it. It was always an event that I struggled with and I usually felt a lot more comfortable racing both shorter and longer races. Actually, let me tell you about my 5K PR. (laughs) It's kind of a funny story. Um, It's pretty unusual. It was the spring of 2006. I was a senior in college, and we were at Wesleyan University in Connecticut. And I had one of my really fast friends who had already graduated pace me in the race. And the meet director said that, you know, this was okay. It was a pretty small 5K. And about 10 minutes before the race started... My friend still wasn't there at the meet, so I didn't know what to do. I was like, okay, I'm just going to run a a normal race without a pacer because I I had the intuition that I was going to win this race. There was only about six people in the race, and I had the fastest seed time. So about eight minutes before the race is scheduled to start, I'm almost ready. I'm going through the final stages of my warm-up. My friend shows up smelling like alcohol. (laughs) He had been out drinking the night before and showed up. He said he was hungover. I just couldn't believe it. I said, dude, you were, you promised to pace me in this race. And, uh, the goal for the day was to try to break 16 minutes for 5k. My PR at the time was 1605. And I thought that I was in good shape, even though I was coming off, uh, an arch strain over the last week or so. But nevertheless, he got ready in about five minutes, and he took me out, and we started the race. And despite him being hungover, he paced me to a 16.02 5K PR. He said that I was breathing like a stuck pig only 200 meters into the race because, well, that's what the 5K is. It's a very fast, hard event where you are redlining almost from the very beginning of the race. So thank you to my friend Adam for pacing me. I wish you were there a little sooner and not smelling like beer, but hey, (laughs) I still got a PR, so thanks a lot. All right, before we get into the real substance of our conversation today, I do want to thank Inside Tracker for making this show possible. If you don't know about Inside Tracker, I'm honestly surprised. They've been everywhere from the Boston Marathon to the Western States 100 miler, helping runners train more strategically and recover more fully. And they do that by testing your blood for biomarkers of fatigue and overtraining and other issues. And they actually test over 40 different metrics, hormones like testosterone and cortisol, vitamins, minerals, cholesterol, you name it. And the goal is to identify weaknesses in your nutrition and how your body is running before they become an actual problem. I got my own test a little while back, and I love the experience. You get a little slip via email to get your blood drawn, and after you give your blood, they take care of the rest. The results come in, and the best part is that you actually get more than just the results. You get advice. Inside Tracker gives you tailored Uh, lifestyle, exercise, and nutrition guidance based on your test information. And that advice, the goal there is really to get your blood values back into the optimal range. It's a great service, and I think it's extraordinarily helpful for hardworking athletes. So give it a shot. Go to insidetracker.com and use code STRENGTHRUNNING at checkout to save 10% on any tests that they offer. One more time, it's insidetracker.com, and the code is STRENGTHRUNNING, no space, and that'll save you 10% on any tier of their different testing services. All right, let's talk about the 5K. The 5,000-meter distance used to feel like a long race for me. I remember during high school cross-country, I would tell myself, you're in this for the long haul, so stay tough. But then in college... Cross country became 8,000 meters. And then during the spring season, there was a 10K on the track. 
after college, I ran my first 10 mile race and then a half marathon and then a bunch of marathons. And after a while, 3.1 miles doesn't really seem very far. And it's really not. For most of us, you know, we can run a 5K in half an hour or less. And if you're slower, your rate of improvement is going to be dramatic if you train intelligently. So hang in there. You're going to be much faster very soon. Now, it doesn't matter if you've run 18 minutes or 35 minutes for the 5K. The training principles that illustrate how to train for it are the same. Now, over the years of coaching thousands of different athletes to new PRs from one and a half mile military fitness tests to short and long course obstacle races, right on up to the 100 mile ultra marathon distance, I've been given a private look inside how runners approach their training. And sometimes I'm honestly horrified. There's no progression. They avoid race specific workouts. I see pacing mistake after pacing mistake. If you want to run faster, you need to take the next logical step in how you prepare and plan your training schedule. Even though you might think the 5K is short, it demands very specific workouts. And good 5K training includes three distinct aspects of running fitness, speed, race-specific fitness, and endurance. If you overemphasize endurance, you're not going to have that higher gear to really hammer the last mile. If you skip the specific 5K workouts, you're going to feel flat with no power. And so you have to balance all three, and that's going to ensure that you'll feel powerful on race day and hopefully accomplish your race goals. So if you're wondering how to train for a 5K, let's look at how to execute each one of these areas of fitness in your training, no matter what fitness level you're at right now. First, let's talk about speed. Have you ever watched a little kid play outside? They sprint everywhere. They don't think about how to strike the ground with their foot. They don't worry about running tall or staying relaxed. They just do it. Watching a bunch of grade schoolers sprint around a playground, I think can be very instructive for all of us because as we get older, we inevitably lose the ability to run really fast. And we have to reclaim that skill. And I think there are two really effective ways of developing speed that are appropriate for most of us. Now, there are actually countless ways of formulating sprint workouts, but let's stick to what works for about 95% of us. First, there are strides. Strides are about 100 meter accelerations. You start an easy jog, you build to about 95% of your max speed, and then you slow down to a complete stop. A stride should take about 20 to 30 seconds, depending on your ability, and they can be done two to three days per week after an easy run. You can also search strength running for what are strides, and we have a demonstration video that is going to be really helpful for you. Now, once you're comfortable running strides, which I think are fundamental, every runner, no matter if you're training for the 100 meters or 100 miles, should be running strides. But then, once you're comfortable with those, you can progress to a more advanced type of speed training, hill sprints. Hill sprints are only 8 to 12 seconds, and they are run at a maximum effort. So in other words, they are run at a full sprint as fast as you possibly can go up a really steep hill. And you do get a full walking recovery in between each hill sprint. Now, hill sprints are a little bit more advanced, and I think should only be done by runners who are comfortable with running fast. But once you start them, they can really help build injury resistance. They're going to improve your neuromuscular control and develop the ability to run at top speeds. So if you're going to add hill sprints to your training plan as you're getting ready to run a fast 5K, follow these few principles. First, run your first hill sprint of every session at a sub-maximal effort. Think of the first one as a warm-up. Number two. Take at least a minute to walk down the hill, catch your breath, and then ready yourself for the next sprint. You really discount the benefits of hill sprints if you rush your recovery. So really, it should be at least a minute, preferably a minute and a half. Start with eight second hill sprints and only about three repetitions. That's not a lot of running, so it's going to feel really easy at first, but that's okay. Then you can build to about six to 10 repetitions of 10 to 12 seconds over about a month. And you can run hill sprints after an easy run once or twice a week. 
Now, it's true that when you first start running hill sprints, there is an inherent injury risk. You're running up a steep hill as fast as you can, after all. But after a couple sessions, they become protective from injuries and help you gain tremendous amounts of strength and speed. They're a staple in the training plans included in Brad Hudson's book, Run Faster. That's one of my favorite running books. And when I have access to a steep hill, I do them myself. They're incredibly effective, plus they're a lot of fun. All right, let's talk about fitness necessity number two, and that is endurance. Now, every race demands a certain level of endurance. The 5K is no different. After all, if you can't run 3.1 miles comfortably during training, how can you race the same distance fast? Now, it's always better to be overprepared, so that's why you run a consistent long run. For most runners, training for the 5K, that should probably be in the 7 to 10 mile range, depending on your ability. More competitive runners are going to want to do a significantly longer run. And I think it's instructive to know that when we were in college training for the 5K, we were still doing 15 to 18 mile long runs. Now, if you really want to get excited, you're going to do some fast running during your long run. But is the long run the only way to build endurance? No, of course not. It's just one piece of the puzzle. There are two other great ways to continue to build your endurance. Number one, your weekly mileage, and just overall consistency, which of course we know is the secret sauce of successful running. Your weekly mileage, or your volume, is simply the number of miles that you run every week. So the more you run, the more endurance you're going to gain. I'm oversimplifying a little bit here, but most runners just simply need to run more. Even a modest increase of 20% in mileage is going to produce big gains in fitness that are going to help you run faster. So let's say you're running 25 miles per week and you increase that to 30 miles every week. That's a 20% increase, not too bad. But if you ran an extra five miles for 15 weeks straight, that's an extra 75 miles or three full weeks of training condensed into the same training period. The power of consistency is that modest increases in mileage built over time contribute to your fitness gradually. Like compound interest, the cumulative impact over time is very powerful. So an extra mile or two added to your long run and a few more on your weekly schedule might not seem very difficult, and it's usually not if you're running at a very easy pace, but over time, they dramatically improve your endurance. And so that's how you make a fast pace seem more comfortable and more manageable. That's how last year's PR pace becomes this year's easy pace. Fitness necessity number three, race specificity. Now, here is where we combine your speed with your endurance. Both of those skills, and yes, I think speed and endurance are both learned skills, are going to help build your race-specific fitness. So first, what exactly is race-specific fitness? Race-specific fitness is simply the type of fitness you need to run your goal pace for the race that you're training for. So for the 5K, let's just say your goal pace is eight minutes per mile. Well, then your race-specific fitness is the ability to hold that pace for 3.1 miles. Getting in shape to do that requires a blend of speed and endurance. Both of those skills are more general, though. The specific nature of your race is what requires smarter workouts. Now, if you're training for a 5K and you're using a strength running training plan, I know there are a lot of you out there, you'll see the exact progression of workouts that transition from general to specific. It's always critical to recognize that any workout by itself means very little. It must come from another workout and lead to yet another. To show you what a 5K specific workout looks like, here's an example. You might run six times a half a mile at your 5K goal pace with a 400 meter recovery. So you'll see here that the total distance of interval running is three miles, and it's done exactly at your goal pace, just like the race. Depending on your ability and fitness level, you can modify the number of repetitions, the total distance, and recovery running to make this slightly easier or more challenging. Now, it doesn't matter if you're a 33-minute 5K runner or an 18-minute 5K runner. These principles are universal and can help all of us train for a 5K and set a new personal best. All right, I hope this was helpful for you. For more details on exactly how to set up your training and run faster races, we have a lot of resources for you at strengthrunning.com coaching. 
Finally, another shout out to Inside Tracker for supporting the podcast. Thank you to them for all the great work that they do helping athletes identify overtraining and physiological deficiencies through their blood testing service. If you're in a hard training cycle right now or are getting ready for a PR attempt, determining your biological weaknesses is a no-brainer in this coach's opinion. Go to InsideTracker.com and use code STRENGTHRUNNING at checkout to save 10% on any test. Thanks for listening. Until next time, run strong.